Hello and thanks for watching another Sunday case study. This Sunday we're looking at Donald Trump. Well, look, he's looking at his own hands here. Let's just borrow his head and shoulders. So uh, I've been looking at Trump's hands. I'm not going to lie, I've not been looking at them all week. I've been looking at them just today. And actually there's quite a lot of similarities between Trump and Putin. Uh, so that was a bit of a shock. And, and a lot of the things I expected to see, uh, I did. But then also there were a few little surprises as well. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to pick out any images online which really show clarity enough to, to get to specifics around events that, uh, uh, you know, upcoming events with Donald Trump, like his court case. I really wanted to get to the bottom of that, find out any... Uh, juicy details there and see what the outcome might be in his palms but i can't because there's just no great detail in uh, any of the images i managed to find online so it's really all about a sort of chirognomy approach uh, this sunday but you know it'd still be interesting and maybe i'll be saying things that ever, ever you know you might think well i already knew this about him already um but i'm just going to say what the hands say so here he is, and you have here, well, actually, it's an earth hand with some fiery qualities. It's certainly quite sort of spatula. It's larger at the base of the palm uh, the, than where the palm meets the fingers. So, as you can see here, uh, Venus, uh, Neptune, and Luna are all fully developed. And these uh, show his... Uh, desire for all the kind of pleasures of life, his ability to uh, captivate an audience, and also he's got a well-developed imagination. So here's Venus, here's uh, Luna in the centre there, and obviously, um, sorry, let's do that again. So here's Venus, here's Neptune, and here's the lunar mount. So all three are, are well-developed, and, and that's exactly what you need, uh, you know, in, in qualities of sort of leadership because Venus is also the ability to, you know, she's the lady of battles. Um, it's our motivating, our driving factor. We, you know, Venus is this sort of place of love and stability and family and friendships. And these are reasons why we um, get into conflict. Often we fight for the things we believe in. And Donald Trump is certainly a fighter of some, uh, of some sort, of some degree. So being that the, the palm is spatulous, I mean, it's squarish, but then it kind of just about uh, widens at the base of the palm. It shows that he's, he's very rational. Uh, he's, he is very logical. He's very practical. It's just a bit longer than it is wide, the palm, which shows he is able to adapt in new situations and new environments. But because it's not quite square, it's just spatula. It shows his, and I, and I mentioned this in my most recent uh, random palm reading, if you want to check out that playlist, uh, that he is uh, an, a bit of an innovator, a bit of a reinventor. He's not happy unless he's um, doing doing things not quite by the rule books. He's, he's, he's rewriting the rules. He likes to... Uh, challenge himself by doing things in a way that's different to others and once he's kind of perfected his way of doing things he'll move on to the next challenge because he'll, be he'll become a bit bored of it so he's not happy unless he's breaking new ground unless he's breaking new rules or, or just old rules or any rules in fact and and this is because trump has a short satin finger and I know because I've measured it against the length of his palm, it's not quite seven uh, eighths of the palm's length. So we know we've got a short satin finger. So he's essentially, he's a bit of a, a free spirit. He uh, abhors bureaucracy and rules and, uh, you know, religious doctrine or any kind of doctrine. Really, he, his, uh, And this kind of, you know, creating new rules writing the the new ways of doing things and his inability to abide by the already set out rules by you know society shows um you know it, it kind of 
already shows us what we already know about Trump, really. Uh, at least in you know, um, uh, in in popular media, that he is a bit of a rule breaker. He's a bit of a rebel, uh, and uh, it's his way or the highway. And that's that's certainly evident by this Jupiter finger as well. There's a lot to be said about the Jupiter finger, really. It's shorter than Apollo. And, um, you know, we if you look at where Apollo is on the palm, where it begins, actually Apollo is lower set than Jupiter, and yet Jupiter is still shorter than Apollo. Still doesn't quite reach uh, the same length. It's, it's close. It's not a massive inferiority complex, but it is still there. Uh, and that's compensated for by uh, his... As I say, the, the love of the simple pleasures in life, and in this case it's womanising, very simple to, to Putin. And I am being judgmental here, and anything I say I could be completely wrong about, it's just my opinion, but this is what, I, this is what I'm seeing. And also, the tip of Jupiter is very well developed. It's almost spatulate. Get, again, just like, and I'm not really doing a good example here, let's try again. I mean, you can sort of see how it sort of balloons at the tip there. You know, it's it's not conic, it's spatulate. And just like the base of the palm, as it, as it you know, it's wider at the bottom uh, than at the top, it shows us, you know, again, this sort of my, my way or the highway type approach to decision making. More, not so much decision making, this is more decision making, but more... Um, ambitious and egotistical philosophical points of view it says my way or the highway this is this, his belief is final really and uh there's no there's no sort of uh self-doubt when it comes to what he's capable of and what he will achieve he's he's got great um you know although jupiter is a bit shorter there's no real uh lacking in self-esteem or confidence this is not a confidence issue this is it's still an inferiority complex in so much as whenever he achieves something he moves the goalpost that little bit further so there's that kind of there's always that lacking feeling it's always that grass is always greener type view he'll look at you know his competitors um his opponents and he'll sort of say yeah but he's got that and i want that you know i've made it this far yeah but it's I'm still there's this to get. So there's this always moving of the goalpost, and that's where this inferiority complex comes from. There's always more to gain. There's always uh, improvements to be made, and he's never quite um, at peace and happy with what he's got. He's certainly a very financially uh, motivated person, and that's evident in the length of uh, the second phalanges of Apollo and Saturn. And also the practical kind of approach here with, uh, again, you've got a, a sort of a spatulate um, Apollo. Saturn appears to be fairly squarish. It's not conic. And, and you know, the combination of, of these things, it shows us that he's, he's materialistic. You know, he's, he's, he, he values uh, money. I think the other thing to mention, just on that note as well, is the the high headline, the way uh, how uh, high the headline is. It's, I mean, it's not astronomically high, but it is sort of high set up there, and that's, you know, if it were higher, I'd say, well, this person is, you know, they they're coming from, they, they their aspirations are more around receiving honors reaching high levels you know they're ambitious he's certainly an ambitious person because overall we've got a um, you know there's a very fiery element to this palm here it's, it's it's a mix between fire and earth and i'm struggling to find out which one it is um but overall you know this this high headline as well in conjunction with the the long phalanges and uh, and the approaches um to how he uh, looks at work and uh, creative, you know, the results of creative efforts are very sort of practical. And 
um, then there needs to be some materialistic gain from these, uh, otherwise it's not worth it. And that's kind of what the, um, you know, the, the sort of uh, higher aspects of, of these uh, traits and abilities sort of show us. So, you know, this very sort of squareness shows this organisation, uh, organised uh, approach to things, but also, you know, he's, he's wanting to do things in a new way, in a different way. There's that, certainly that, um, I, I am a very different person, and I am a very important person, and me, me, me. And I say that because of the way the thumb here is, is actually um, a crucial sort of clue as to who we're dealing with here, because the thumbs are very, um, they're pointing inwards towards you know and and often thumbs that do this thumbs they're, they're quite tricky they show us how we're inward thinking that's that's what they're saying here that he's thinking about himself and what he is capable of and also i think the limelight is on him he wouldn't really want it any other way and that's why you know luna is so well uh pronounced as this um desire to put himself out there and um and the more i think he does the more he he considers himself he considers himself very important now the thumb it's a bit like the hammer and each finger are nails the way we uh, utilize our abilities is activated by the thumb, if you will. So when you've got a person that, um, let's say for example, constantly points with their index finger, they are unconsciously uh, delegating, decision-making, uh, dominating. And these are all very Jupiter, um, you know, Jupiter uh, approaches, uh, traits. So when you've got a person who utilizes specifically uh, unconsciously, um, physically, you know, putting these two fingers together, you've got this, um, the thumb is who I am, it's me, it's how I show myself off to the world, it's willpower and it's logic, it's ideas put into action, literally ideas put into action. And when uh, we're connecting these two um, digits together, we're kind of actualizing we're, we're demonstrating unconsciously what we're doing he's he's quite literally um hitting that nail on the head each time he does it he's unconsciously uh activating his jupiterian um, jupiterian qualities so you know all things ambitious and egotistical and decision making and authority uh, judgment you know he's it's it's very sort of um how can i put it i mean i don't know one word to sum all those qualities up but he's i, I don't really know how to put this but he's activating all of those uh, traits and personality characteristics and abilities about himself unconsciously as he does it that's my personal kind of psychological, uh, amateurish psychological theory. I know um, I don't have a, a background in psychology. I'm complete amateur, but that's just my theory. And you don't have to look hard or even, you know, wait for very long when you're watching him um, make a speech. He'll do this a lot. Uh, so, you know, he puts them together a lot as he's making his points. And, and it's it's a very sort of unconscious thing. But anyway, I'll move on. So thumbs, as I say, they're very, very tricky. And in Eastern Palmistry, Eastern Palmistry are superb when it comes to thumbs. Western Palmistry is kind of lacking still in terms of what we know about thumbs. And when I say Eastern Palmistry, that's a very vague term. That's, you know, Chinese, Tibetan, Indian Palmistry. They're actually all different schools of thought, really. Um, but they're all much better when it comes to the thumb. There's, there's a, it seems to be a lot more um, sort of study over the thousands of years um, when it comes to the thumb. And, and you can tell just a 
great deal in, in just looking at the thumb alone. Um, unfortunately, as I say, I can't really get any sort of close in-depth detail with any one of these images here, but David Brandon Jones, the uh, superb late palmist who was my mentor's mentor, he's written several books. I think he wrote four books and um, I've got them all anyway. They're, they're superb. I recommend any book written by David Brandon Jones. Uh, he said about thumbs, the more supple they are at the um, at the bend of the willpower, the, the more complex in nature the person. And, and that couldn't be more true because whenever I read a person's palm with a supple thumb like this, I actually find myself, I get quite confused about the overall reading. I, I, it, it, they're very difficult to work out. They are very complex people. Uh, and the same, um, you know, is, is always, it's always the same in uh, terms of just trying to figure them out socially and conversation and character anyway, palmistry aside. They're very complicated people. Not No one person has the same view about a person with uh, flexible thumbs. They tend to be very adaptable. As I say, they tend to be inward thinking. They're quite introverted. Um, not introverted, sorry, but they're introspective. You know, they're very inward thinking. Self-concerned, not necessarily selfish, but very um, wrapped up in their own thoughts. And their own uh, desires uh, and also Trump's thumbs they tend to taper in and, and they get quite thin at the tip so we're not looking at particularly a person with a bad temper actually uh, this is a person with refined tastes and a person who is good in short bursts but then actually needs frequent uh, frequent breaks and we see that with uh, Trump taking as many sort of um, golf uh, golfing uh, holidays uh, when he was in office anyway and also uh, a flexible thumb like this is uh, associated with joint issues and gyne gynecological issues in women so he has a kind of uh, predisposition to uh, back pain joint pains potentially there's a potential there anyway and um, as I say, refined taste. So he's a bit of a spender, and that that ties in with you know uh, money being uh, on 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 quite high up in his priorities. So what else is there to say about the thumb? He's adaptable, and I say you know this also goes in line with the the length of the palm. It's a little bit longer than it is wide, so he's adaptable. He's highly adaptable to new situations, and he's good at getting people on his side. And, and that's because of this uh, very well-developed uh, Neptune mount. Now, in most people's palms, you wouldn't even call this a mount at all. It's normally slightly depressed. But with Trump, it's it just sort of looks as though it's all one, um, you know, swollen band around the base of the palm here. And this, this is an excellent quality, um, you know, ability for anyone who uh, has the need to captivate and uh, gain votes. Now, his headline is actually, I've looked at other images, not quite that long. It's about, it, it stops under Mercury, it's around that sort of longish. And um, it's, it's not a short headline, in any case. And also, can't quite see it here. Let's have a look at another image. You can see here just how long this headline is. Uh, and as I say, it, it stops just under Mercury here. It's got a, a decent slope to it. There is, um, it's not a large gap between the head and the heart line. He's, He's a fairly private person, and this uh, certainly shows by the way that Mercury is aside from the others. It leans away. It desires his, uh, you know, he's he's quite willing to uh, work with others because these two fingers are close enough together. They lean in on one another. He's quite happy to have company as long as he's got the um, option of a little bit of seclusion and isolation a little bit of he's quite a private person and and you see that by the narrowness of both the head and the heart line and the 
the Mercury finger. So he's in a bit of a contradiction there. He likes to have um, a social life, but he's also he needs a clear divide, and he expresses himself, you know, only um, when he's alone and feels safe doing so. And that's a, a lot of that is is golfing actually. But also, he's he only really reveals himself to those who he's closest to. He's quite he's, there's a lot of mistrust here, um, and that's understandable because you know he's been caught out a few times with you know people recording what he said and things. Um, you know, I'm not going to quote him. It's been done many times, but. Uh, the other things I thought that were interesting, and the more um, I looked into it, the more I discovered um, there's quite, it's an apparent sort of deceitful sort of nature about Donald Trump. And this is evident in the way that uh, it's not it's not huge with Apollo, but Apollo does lean in quite a bit. Uh, Mercury, particularly at the tip, leans in quite a bit that's not a bad thing necessarily and in fact uh you know the first phalanx of mercury leaning in is um diplomacy skills and tact he doesn't really have a great amount of tact but he does have uh at least from what i've seen but he does have diplomacy skills you know whatever your thoughts are you don't get to a position uh, as high as he has without uh, those sorts of skills but Classically, when you have a person who has uh, Mercury and Apollo leaning in like this, it's uh, a sign of a deceitful nature. It's a sign of uh, a liar. And also the flexibility as well. And this is something I forgot to mention about the thumb. A flex flexible fingers are a flexible philosophy. And so, you know, his, his stories uh, might change from one person to the next the same information might sort of also be quite flexible so there's that as well and also here's something to mention so the reset at the wrist here it's said that when these have broken uh, these are indications of a liar and as I say I'm not I'm not completely sold on this because my images aren't incredible but it doesn't look like they're the bottom one just about looks complete but this top one up here looks a bit broken so if that's true well then we've got another indication as well of uh, a deceitful nature so the combination of you know this mistrustful nature and others and uh, signs of deceit as well i suppose you project your own uh you know, ideas of yourself in others, would I, you know, if I, it, I suppose if, what I'm trying to say is, if I am um, a liar, I'm going to think everyone else is. And so it, I'm kind of um, backtracking a little bit here. Um, I suppose what I'm trying to say is that because he feels mistrusting of others, he's more likely to be deceitful as well as these other signs of deceit in the palm. And I've noticed this uh, not so much on the right, but on the left, Apollo, uh, you don't really, it's not a great example in this image, but on his left palm, Apollo is a little bit wasted on the second phalange, and this is always a classic sign of a, a nitpicker, someone who's really finicky. And, uh, you know, is, is, is constantly finding fault with others. But this well-developed tip of Apollo, and, I mean, all of his tips are quite well-developed. The sloping headline, that's a nice sign. That shows, actually, imagination. And also, what's to say about this is the, um, it's the, he's got, a, a, actually, he's got quite a lot of creative ability. He's got some artistic ability, which is probably not harnessed, and a sense of the dramatic. Uh, he's got a bit of a dramatic flair about him. And this creativity may also uh, have a hand in uh, his ability to lie as well, if, if that is, you know, what's happening. I'm just saying what I'm seeing. So having said all of this, 
there is some actually some good here um so trump has a loyalty line and you can't see it in this image i'll show you again in another image so this is a loyalty line it comes in from uh the family ring and you can see just there it's quite a deep line it comes in from the the place of home family friendships and uh, relationships uh, a place of love and it's known as a loyalty line sometimes it's known as the heartbreak line uh, but this clearly shows that uh, Trump does have uh, and as well as that you know a, a headline that's long actually shows us that this person has an ability to be loyal as well so whilst he might not be completely truthful he uh, or, or even faithful he is loyal in what he feels uh, loyal is so he might have uh, a wife that he um, adores in the way that he does although he might be unfaithful to her i don't know maybe he is maybe he isn't this is not necessarily disloyalty in terms of what this person thinks i believe he you know, as long as he is supported and, uh, you know, as long as his spouse does basically what he says when he says, he will be, he will provide them with everything they need. And in, in terms of what this person feels is loyal, you know, what loyalty is and what faithful is, this is good enough for him. He will treat them and um, with what he feels is respect and and look after them materialistically because this is what matters to him this is what he holds quite high up in his list of priorities he'll make sure they want for nothing and he'll also fight for them because he is a bit of a fighter and so this loyalty line is actually a, and the, the long headline these are excellent signs whilst he might not be completely truthful to the outside world those he's closest to his closest friends colleagues family members and um you know those that are faithful to him he he actually will fight for now the heart line i don't see an altogether you know in some images it looks short and others um it, it looks like it does actually reach up but in any case let's say it's this long for argument's sake so a short heart line would show some selfishness i don't think i see you know it's, as I say, it's hard. In some images, it looks like it's short, and in this one, it, it looks like it might actually be reaching up in between uh, Jupiter and Saturn, which shows that actually he's got some sense of uh, right and wrong, which is good. He'll need it because his, his Saturn finger is quite short. And the way this is something that I do personally, I don't know about any other palmist, but this is what I do. So the heart line here, look at it. It's on the straightish side, but there is some capacity to love. The capacity to love is demonstrated by the curve. So if you make a curve like this and try not to make it as rubbish as I'm making it, draw a straight line from uh, from end to end. Now you've got yourself a bow, and as I say, this is just my technique. And so what i do is i i try to determine how powerful is this bow by how it looks how far would would an arrow fly if i fired um let's do this properly a little arrow would this arrow fly uh yes it would it wouldn't go incredibly far and that's that's how we you know i think of it as cupid's bow it's fitting isn't it it's the heart line so that's my little sort of uh test not very scientific but it, i feel it does work he has the capacity to love however it's it's not huge um and as i say for those closest to him he's you know he's willing to show his true self He's willing to be himself. He does have a uh, capacity to love. I don't think we see um, a sociopath or psychopathic, although I couldn't be completely sold with my own findings, to be perfectly honest, because of the lack of clarity around these images. But this is not a typical heartline of 
a psychopath or a sociopath. Yeah, it's on the straightest side. It's not the best bow in the world. But there is some capacity there. He does have a good understanding of others and their needs because of the width of the palm and in conjunction with the length as well, the adaptability as well to adapt to other people's needs. He understands how uh, to engage with an audience. He understands the, what people want and he gives it to them. He understands people. So, you know, all of these things tied in, you can kind of get a, a, a picture, an image as to who he is. Now, his success line, his um, at least his career line stems from low down on Luna and this is said to be in Tibetan palmistry someone who's reincarnated come back with unfinished business and it, it if that is true if you believe in reincarnation I don't know what other people's thoughts are on this and I'm not going to per press my own beliefs in terms of this on others but it would seem likely that he was a politician in a past life and I, I wouldn't put it past him being some sort of Roman orator. So I know I've spoken a little bit about uh, the the hand, the fingers, what they're telling us about his uh, ability, uh, possible abilities to be deceptive. However, they also show us, you know, and this, this sort of um, Mercury leaning in at the tip here shows us the shrewdness as well, financial shrewdness. And I've already mentioned that... Uh, materials are quite high up on his priorities so this tip of uh, mercury is quite long and that i'm not sure if i already mentioned but that shows great powers of persuasion combined with the strong neptune mount as well developed neptune mount that shows his ability to almost hypnotize an audience into uh um you know engaging with an audience to, to persuade to see things from his point of view he understands what people want what people uh, think on mass and the left hand here just to show you that it is him the left hand here shows us that um, Jupiter was once acceptably long almost as long as Apollo and you can see here uh, the second uh, phalanx of Apollo is as I say it's sort of um, it, it's sort of quite narrow and that, that shows this sort of finicky nitpicking kind of nature. We've got a, a very sort of a thick knot of the third uh, phalanx of Saturn showing us that actually he's, he's quite analytical and that goes in, in line with uh, his, his headline. And I wasn't expecting to see that. I thought we'd see someone who's quite quick to, to, to judge and think and act, but actually he uh, thinks quite hard and long about things before he processes things at, at length before making uh, you know a decision so I, I wasn't expecting to see these kinds of knots here uh, this very sort of analytical way of thinking and Jupiter on the left hand is acceptably long it reaches uh, you know the up to the uh, halfway point on the first phalanx of Saturn and it also reaches it appears anyway uh, in this image uh, the same uh, height as a, as Apollo. I mean, it's, it's not a clear indication, but the left and the right palms certainly show us uh, a different story. So his his right hand Apollo is um, is now longer, and Jupiter is now shorter, and and that's taking into account where. Um, the fingers lie as well. So obviously I'm looking at the left hand now, but I'm just telling you the right hand, uh, you know, the Jupiter finger, the index finger, is now shorter than this image here, and Apollo is longer. So this shows us that although his, uh, it's not actually his confidence that's been crushed by events, uh, you know, in, in his career and in his life, it's his, his ability Feelings of his achievements has has been squashed. Not his self-esteem. He's still uh, very much got the self-assurance he needs. But also Apollo being longer on um, the right hand as well shows us that his uh, need to uh, develop his reputation, his reputation matters more now as well than ever. 
So here you can just about see it on the on the left hand here. You can see uh, you can always determine lengths of the fingers properly uh, by looking at the backs of the hands. So you can see here uh, Jupiter, that's the index finger, is long enough on the left. And Apollo is actually quite short. We can also see the short nails, the squarish, shortish uh, nails here. This, this shows a relatively short temper. Uh, he's, got, he's got no time for uh, wasted arguments. He's, he'll just walk away from things that aren't really worth his time. Um, so we see here he's, he's innately, in, inherently, he's got all the self-assurance he needs. His reputation didn't really matter that much. Rules don't really matter that much. His Mercury is certainly long enough. He's got the ability to communicate and express himself and, and persuade others. As I say, he's got this well-developed uh, first phalanx of Mercury. And then if we look at the right, you can see that Apollo is shorter. Uh, sorry. Jupiter, the index finger, is now shorter and Apollo is longer. It's it's not easy to see looking one by one, but when you look at both of them and compare them as, as he's clearly doing in this image, you can see how Donald Trump has changed over time and uh, and you can clearly see the, the flexibility in the thumb here. Look how um, flex back that thumb is. And look at it on the right there, it's still just as, he's still thinking about himself just as much. His philosophies are still just as flexible. His truth is as well. So I'd love to be able to say with some certainty, you know, uh, provide specifics around uh, future events, current events with Donald Trump's career and his life. But as I say, I can't find any clarity. And I'm not going to make guesstimations based from blurry images. So, but, you know, he certainly has the abilities to uh, win a court case. As I say, he's a fighter. He will fight for what he believes in. And what he believes in, uh, you know, it, it could change from one moment to the next. So he's got that ability to captivate an audience as well, masterfully. He knows what a jury wants to hear. So he's certainly got that ability to win a court case. It's whether or not he is capable of s telling the truth, really, that will determine, uh, you know, his ability to win this case. I think if he if he um, wins over the jury and admits where he is wrong or where he's been deceitful, I think there might be more of a chance of him winning. I don't actually know the uh, specific ins and outs of this case. I just know that he's got a court case coming up. I've not looked into it whatsoever. I've not even looked into his life or background. I'm not really all that interested. I just wanted to look at the hands of um, a high profile politician and do a case reading, do a, a Sunday case study, because he's obviously he's a, an entertaining man, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, I've, I found it quite enjoyable, quite insightful. But as I say, there are quite a lot of similarities between Trump and Putin, it seems, in his palm anyway. A bit of a no-nonsense approach. Uh, he, he hasn't got time for uh, efforts that aren't going to reap rewards. You know, in, in these respects, he's very similar. He's, very, um, he's got diplomacy skills. He's got an ability to captivate. And, uh, you know, he's also got a bit of an inferiority complex. He's also a bit of a womanizer. Lots of little similarities there. None of them are all, all that surprising, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I was able to be a bit more specific with um, Putin's reading last week, although I'm not completely convinced I did a great job. Um, but there we go. So thanks for watching, and I hope uh, this has been enjoyable. I hope I've said things that you know people didn't already know, but I'm not too sure about that, because most of this reading has been about character analysis and um, personality traits and abilities rather than anything specific around sort of health or career or love life or any anything like that. So thanks for watching. Please comment below if you've got anything to say about my reading, any feedback or anything about Trump, you know, that you, you think might be enlightening. I'm interested to hear. And any feedback helps me become a better palmist as well. So I really value that. 
and I also really value all the subscribers. Thank you so much for all your shares as well. It's amazing. I, I never thought that, you know, after three months, uh, this channel would be as big as it is. So thank you to everyone, and I'll see you next Sunday.